tonight we will be in Zephaniah chapter 2. That's Zephaniah chapter 2. Before we get started, is there anyone that has any prayer requests? All right, if there's no prayer requests, I might ask Brother Coffee, if you don't mind, my brother, if you'll open us up with a word of prayer. Uh, yes, let us pray. Uh, most gracious Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Father, for another opportunity, Father, to call upon your name once again. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your love and your kindness. We thank you, Father, for allowing your son, Jesus Christ, to come into this world and die, Father, for the sins of the world. We thank you, Father, for your, your patience, Father, you've given us an opportunity to be a part of your kingdom. We thank you, Father, for the gathering, Father, of the saints, Father, to look at another portion of your word. We pray, Father, for our brother Green, Father, as he's now preparing to be a part of uh, a sad moment. But yet, Father, we just pray that you would uh, bless his family and that all things will go well. If it's your will, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the love that you've, uh, that he has shown to his family and to us, that he's been a good uh, demonstration and inspiration to all of us. We pray for all the families, Father, that are present here tonight. We just pray, Father, that you will meet us all at the point of our needs and, and continue to bless the one true church, Father, we can read about in the scriptures. Forgive us, the Lord, of our sins, Father, we have done something contrary to your will. We just ask, Lord, that you will cleanse us, from, Father, from all unrighteousness. So we thank you, Father, for this time of prayer. We just pray, Father, that our hearts and minds are prepared for what your word has to teach us tonight. So we thank you and ask these blessings in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for that prayer, Brother Coffee. Once again, everyone, we're in Zephaniah chapter 2. The Zephaniah chapter 2. Uh, I'm going to ask Brother Stevenson if he's able, would he start us off with the first five verses? Who's that, Brother Green? Uh, I was asking you if you'll read the first five verses in Zephaniah 2. Okay. Yeah, my, my computer's acting. I'm going to read, though, but the devil trying to get busy. Let me, uh, let me start this video. This, I didn't even try to cut this off. This thing is jumping back and forth. Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse number 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation, not desire. Before the decree, bring forth before the days pass as a shaft. Before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you. Before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness. Seek meekness. It may be you shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. For Gaza shall be forsaken, and Ashkelon a desolation. They shall drive out Ashdod at the noonday, and Ekron shall be rooted up. Woe unto the inhabitants of the sea coast, the nation of the Cherethites. <laughs> the word of the Lord is against you, O Canaan, the land of the Philistines. I will even destroy you, that there shall be no inhabitants. Thank you. Thank you for that, my brother. Is there anyone that has any questions or comments concerning these scriptures that's been read? Yeah, we're at the part of our study where uh, God is in this chapter calling uh, Israel uh, to repentance. And again, we understand and there is a day of the Lord that is coming and the day of the Lord is judgment. And that judgment, we understand, is going to be uh, done eventually by Babylon. Uh, the reason God is going to bring destruction, as we mentioned on last week or our last studies, F and I one, is because Israel had corrupted the worship. Uh, they were compromising by worshiping uh, with foreign nations and they were complacent. In other words, they had that attitude, don't bother me. Remember, they said back in chapter 1, God's not going to do good or evil, back in verse number 12 of chapter 1. And so they had become complacent. They were content uh, with the lifestyle, the way they were living, having one foot uh, worshiping God in the temple and one foot uh, worshiping the false gods and, and bells and so forth. And so I mentioned last time they were getting D's on their report card uh, from God. And the D's were God's going to bring distress and depression and desolation and darkness. He's going to pour their blood out like dust and their flesh was going to be as dung. And so right now, this is a call to repentance to them, to gather together. And notice three times in, in chapter 2, uh, God has used the word in verse 2, he's used the word before. You know, before, in verse 2, before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as a chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. So four times he actually uses the word before. He wants them to repent before desolation comes. And again, we mention this all the time, that people won't uh, receive condemnation from God because 
of sin, but because they won't repent of their sin. And so this is a God's plea, and it's called uh, to repent before the destruction or the day of the Lord come. You know, what I like about verse 3 is he tells you also how that can be done. How can you save yourself from the wrath of God, the destruction of God uh, on that day? Well, verse 3, he uses the word seek three times. Seek the Lord. See, that, that, that's how you and I can repent, by seeking the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness. That's another way we can be saved from the destruction of the Lord. Seek meekness. And it may be you shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. And so all he's trying to get them to do is to repent uh, before that day comes. But it's interesting, too, as we as we look at this, that before God is going to deal with them he's showing them also he's going to deal with the nations around them and so when you look at as we go through the rest of this study he's going to not just deal with judah he's going to deal with all the nations that surround him in the east the west the north and the south he's dealing with all those nations and so when you look at verse number four through seven when he talks about well four, he deals with gaza as brother as i just read in verse number uh, four for gaza shall be forsaken and ashkelon a desolation they shall drive out ashdod at the noonday and ekron shall be rooted up these are the philistines and the philistines were located in the west they were on the west side of judah and so god's going to deal with them and as we go through this study he's going to deal with moab and Ammon, who are in the east. He's going to deal with the Ethiopians in verse 12, who are in the south. And he's going to also deal with Assyria, who's in the north. And, and another thing I want to point out, when Zephaniah is prophesying, we have to understand this. Assyria, who was in the north, has already been taken into captivity. They've been in captivity 100 years. And so Assyria had already come and taken Israel in the north captive, the Ninevites. And it's been 100 years since that happened. And Judah. Your mic is moving, Brother Stevenson. Yeah, this thing, I got a, a mouse that's just going all over the place on it. It just touched the mute button. And so Assyria, they didn't learn from Assyria, is, is the point I'm trying to make. Babylon in the south, where the temple was, did not learn from their, their sister Assyria about how serious God is about repenting before judgment comes. Thank you for that, Brother Stevenson. Do we have anyone else that has any questions or comments concerning the scriptures that's been read? All right, if not, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Lewis, if you don't mind, could you please take verses 6 through 10 for us, please? Yes. Verse 6. And the seacoast shall be dwellings and cottages for shepherds and foes for flocks. And the coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah. They shall feed thereupon. In the houses of Ashkelon shall they lie down in the evening. For the Lord their God shall visit them and turn away their captivity. I have heard the reproach of Moab and the, the revelings of the children of Ammon, whereby they have reproached my people and magnified themselves against their border. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, surely Moab shall be as Sodom and the children of Ammon as Gomorrah. Even the breeding of nettles and salt pits and a perpetual desolation. The residue of my people shall spoil them, and the remnant of my people shall possess them. This shall they have for their pride, because they have reproached and magnified themselves against the people of the Lord of hosts. Thank you, my brother. Is there anyone that has uh, any questions or comments concerning these scriptures that's been read? And I'm not sure if y'all can hear me or see me. This, Like I said, this thing is just jumping all over the place. But I do want to note that in verse 6 and 7 that Brother uh, Lewis just read, you know, these verses are verses of hope. Uh, because even though God is going to purify and cleanse and, and destroy some of the people who won't repent of their sins, he's still going to keep a remnant. And that's what we're seeing in verse number 6 and 7. And the sea coast shall be dwellings and cottages for shepherds and folds for flocks. And the coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah. They shall feed thereupon. And the house of Ashkelon shall they lie down in the evening. For the 
the Lord their God shall visit them and turn away their captivity. And so there's going to be a remnant and there's going to be hope for those who will repent. Because remember, everybody who goes into Babylonian captivity for 70 years, they're going to be a remnant that's going to be spared and be able to go back home and to rebuild. And I think we understand that because we've been studying Old Testament history. And so once they're uh, in Babylonian captivity for 70 years, those who do what they're supposed to do while they're there and live right, trust God. Such people like we see like Daniel is there and he does what's right. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these are all men that are in Babylonian captivity and they're doing right while they're there, still living right and still trusting God. And they're not the only ones. There'll be others. And so what God is showing is even though he's going to bring his discipline and he's going to bring judgment, some are not going to do right. He's going to destroy them and the surrounding nations, but he's also going to keep his promises. And so that's the hope that we have. Uh, even among our brethren today, people not living right, uh, saints not all acting right. What we have to understand Saying there are still some in the church who have not defiled their garments. And so we're waiting on another day of the Lord to come too, and that and a judgment day. And that's when Jesus comes back. And some are going to be cast into everlasting destruction and fire, but some, a remnant, is going to be taken into heaven. Uh, and we'll go to that place where God has and his son has prepared a place for us. Thank you for that, Brother Stevenson. We have anyone else that has any questions or comments concerning the scriptures that's been read? And if not, uh, Brother Dave, if you can, would you please take verses 11 through 15 for us, please? Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Verse 11. The Lord will be terrible unto them, for he will famish all the gods of the earth. And the men shall worship him, everyone from his place, even all the isles of the heathen. Ye Ethiopians uh, also, ye shall be slain by my sword. I will, and he, <clears throat> and he will stretch out his hand against the north and destroy Assyria and make Nineveh a desolation and dry like a wilderness. And flocks shall lie down in the midst of her, all the beasts of the nations, both the uh, Camerax and the bit bittern shall lodge in the upper lintels of it. Their voice shall sing in the windows. Desolation shall be in their threshold, for he shall uncover the cedar wood. This is the rejoicing city that dwelt carelessly, that said in her heart, I am, and there is none beside me. How is she become a desolation, a place for beasts to lie down in? Everyone that passes by shall she uh passes by shall hiss and wag his hand thank you for that my brother is there anyone that has any questions or comments concerning these scriptures that's been read i have a question so in in chapter two uh, this, I, you said, Brother Stevenson, that this was a call for repentance. So is this call for repentance for those surrounding nations as well as Judah? Yeah, I mean, the idea of God is showing that he's going to judge all nations. Whether you were a Jew or a Gentile, it didn't matter. Uh, you were expected to do right. And so God is judging all, all nations um, because all nations, you know, just even morally, you know right from wrong. And so that's really the idea. And so nobody is getting away with not with, with with the excuse of not knowing God without, you know, doing justice and doing the right thing. And that's kind of that is what Paul is talking about in Romans. When you look, look at the book of Romans, chapter one, Paul in chapter one is dealing with the Gentiles. He's dealing with how the Gentiles have no excuse uh, for the things that they were doing because God could be known if they were seeking uh, to know him. And so he deals with, in Romans 1, the, the, the Gentiles. In Romans chapter 2, he deals with the Jews. And so Jews saying, okay, we have God's law, but God's basically telling them, oh, you're not getting away either. You know, because, you know, even having the law, you did wrong. And, and the idea is all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. 
You know, there is no law that any of us can keep and hold on that could merit us heaven. And so chapter one, he deals with the Gentiles. No excuse. Judgment is coming. Chapter two, the Jews uh, who do the same thing that the Gentiles do with the law. No excuse. And in chapter three of Romans, he says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so Paul lets us know all have sinned. And so there's a judgment day that is coming to all people, not just God's people. Now, get this. Now, those of us us who are members of the church and have God's law, uh, to whom much has been given, much is expected. Judgment will start at the house of God. And so to whom much has been given, much is expected. The Jews should have known better, you know, because they had a, a greater relationship with God. And that same thing applies to those of us who are in the church today. We have God's truth. We know we have God's spirit. Uh, we should know better uh, and, and act better and live better because we've tasted of the heavenly gift. And so God will will deal with us as well. But he's going to deal with all the nations. Deal with Babylon. That's eventually going to take Judah into captivity. They're going to be judged for what they're doing. The Assyrians are going to be judged for taking Israel in the north captive and how they treated God's people, even though God, even though God used them. You know, think about this. God used Satan. God used Satan. But at the end of the day, Satan's going to be punished. Remember, Jesus, as he was baptized, he was led by the spirit in the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So God is using Satan. The father used Satan to tempt his son. He used him, but he used him to accomplish his will. And then at the end of the day, he's going to be thrown in, in, a, in a devil's hell. That's where he's going to go. And so there's no one exempt from the day of the Lord. And that's the theme behind the book of Zephaniah, the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord. You see that throughout uh, this chapter uh, of the book of uh, Zephaniah, the day of the Lord. Thanks for that, Brother Stevenson. Do we have anyone else that has any questions or comments concerning these scriptures that's been read? Do we have anyone that have any other questions, whether it's about tonight's study or something else that you may have? Right. Uh, yeah, I got a uh, memo from uh, Brother, um, let's see, I guess it's Brother Pitts. Are, are we scheduled for some kind of, uh, it says, um, I, I, I'll go ahead and read it because I don't know if everyone got one. I want to follow up with regarding a date when we're coming on Minister Stevenson's Zoom page to present our detailed breakdown of why Christ was not created. I don't know if anyone got that. I don't know if if, if that's the uh, topic of discussion or what was agreed to. Uh, is that is is that indeed what's happening on Saturday? I wasn't going to bring that up there everybody but since he put that out there let me let me let me say that as i ended up talking to uh brother pitts a few days ago i don't want to say two or three days ago i talked to brother pitts uh and he and i had this discussion about jesus being created and was he the son uh you know a son before he came to this earth and uh, i must say this brother pitts could not answer the question i'll make sure we get this and so he brings up some of the guys. He could not answer it. Uh, I gave him John 17, 24. He, you know, gave him scriptures that I need him to look at to show uh, that he was, in fact, created. And so he suggested uh, that he, and I think Brother Leslie, you're on here. Brother Leslie's on here. I don't care which one of them do it. Brother Leslie uh, himself or uh, one of them that, that's on, and I didn't know you, maybe you get on his Zoom study too. Maybe that's why he sent it to you, Brother Dave. I'm not sure if you're part of his classes that he does on Friday or not. But nonetheless, uh, he, I'm giving him an opportunity or one of these bro brothers, the opportunity this Friday, this Saturday rather, uh, if they want to speak on this subject of, of the creating of Jesus. Now, what we're going to do, it's going to be done in decency and order. It ain't going to be no going back and forth. It's going to be, I gave him a topic I want him to stick with. As we go through this, through this study, he said he will have scriptures to prove that Jesus wasn't created. He's, he, he's adamant about us being unified, he says, and coming together. I let him know we're not coming together, united under false doctrine. And uh, and so if I'll give him an opportunity uh, to give his dissertation and with scriptures to prove why Jesus could not be created. 
And uh, I said, we'll do that this, this coming Saturday, but I was just going to run it by some of the other brethren uh, before I announce it to everybody. But since he's already announced that, that's fine. We have no problem with that. But I am letting them know it's not going to get out of hand. Uh, and uh, it, I want him to, I don't know if he's going to do it uh, or he's going to get one of the other brethren. He's had a, a conglomeration of guys and girls, of, of sisters have gotten together. And they've all dissected these scriptures together on a Friday on their Zoom, and they wanted to share this with this group so we can be unified. And I'm fine with that. Uh, and so I was just going to run it by you brothers before I announce it, Brother Green and Brother Coffee, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm going to talk with Brother Ose and Brother Javier as well. And, uh, and uh, we're just going to go from there. And so that's what he's announcing, Brother Dave. I know I'm going the long way about explaining, but I wanted to tell you all how this all came about, and I am aware uh, that he and I did talk, okay? But that'll be this Friday, uh, Saturday, rather, at 6 o'clock. Well, Brother Stevenson, um, just a question, because I know I thought we dealt with the issue whether uh, Christ was created or not, so I thought that the issue that was going to be addressed was going to be whether or not he was a son before he came to earth. Is that going to be part of it, too? Yeah, that. That is that is that is definitely it because well see and and this is what I'm trying to get him and others to see if he's a son and that implies creation see this there's no getting around that and, and and I'm trying to get them to see that if he's called a son that implies created that's what they have to understand there's no way you can be called a son without being created. This doesn't, it, it, it never makes sense in 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 a, in a secular sense, and it surely doesn't make sense in a spiritual sense. But if he wants to think he can prove that, that that's fine. And so th th that's the thing that I told Brother Pitts. I gave him, and I'm going to shoot the questions to him again. I need him to explain John 17, 24. Let me, I'm going to tell you all what I told him real quick. John said, since we got a little time, go to John 17, 24. This is exactly what I share with him. I'm not hiding anything. Uh, he's more worried about unity. And this is what I told him. I'm not unified to false doctrine. I don't care if everybody leaves. I'm not I mean, I'm not trying to be nobody's friend. That's not what I'm in this for. Now, we got to stick with the truth. And so, now, this is what I shared with him. Jesus says, Father, I will that they also, whom you've given me, be with me where I am. That they may behold my glory, which you have given me. For you love me before the foundation of the world. That's the scripture I dealt with Brother Pitts on. I asked Brother Pitts this question. Was Jesus before the foundation of the world, was he the son? Here was his answer. No. Now that was his answer. No, he was not a son. I said, then what does this scripture mean before the foundation of, of, the, of the world? He said, brother, let me go back and look at it. But I have other scriptures that will support that Jesus was not a son before he came through the womb of Mary. Okay, now that was that was his response, and then I, I asked him his question: What scripture? That's what I want him to answer. And anybody else who thinks they can answer this, what scripture will prove that if Jesus was created, that he couldn't be worshipped? And that's and we've dealt with that before. And we're now, if he if what scripture says that if the Father created the Son, that he couldn't be worshipped, and he could not give a scripture. And I know he's not going to give one. And nobody else will give one Saturday. And, and, uh, but anyway, nonetheless, we'll give him time to to, to voice and, and 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 explain whatever he and others looked at. And then after that, we'll be through with it. Anybody have any other questions, comments, or thoughts on that? Yeah, um, I kind of have to go with Brother uh, Green on that. I thought we dealt with this issue. I thought it was put to bed and that it was fairly understood by most of us. But... My contention is that if he is still off base, then my sort of my uh, sort of strategy would be to try to reach his soul, as as we say to sinners and those that have have sinned, uh, saints that have sinned and gone astray. We need to be honest, some kind of strategy to bring him around to scriptures that that will save his soul because. If he's still off on this, then there's a problem. And I, I feel that we have to, you know, like we do with all uh, brethren, try to reach their soul and try to help them spiritually in that way. 
Yeah, I, I agree. But, you know, brother, and I agree with you, brother Dave. And that's why, I, you know, we'll give him opportunity. Because like I said, we, none of us are above reproach. I'm not the master teacher. You know, I'm not Jesus. Uh, but, we, but this is what I told him. We're going to hold you accountable to read your scripture in context. I mean, that's just that's just too easy, brother. Read your scripture in context. And so all, all he's got, if he can show us a scripture where Jesus could not be the son before he came to this earth, then, then I'd love to see it. I'd love to see how he wasn't a son before he came to this earth, and he said he can prove it. And so, and I'm with you. We're going to try to reach him, but at the end of the day, it's God that gives the increase. We water, one plant, one waters, but God has to give the increase. See, I think a lot of these brother and brother Dave have the mindset that because we're all members of the Church of Christ, that we're all you know, going to be united, but we, and, and, and that is what Jesus prayed for, but we can't be united to false doctrine. See, people have to understand Elijah was fighting against his brethren on Mount Carmel. I don't, I think we missed that. He's dealing with his brother who are Jews who are halt between two opinions. And so we have some of our brethren who will deny who Jesus is. They will deny it. They will deny that he was created. He was begotten that he's the first creation of God. They deny the son before he came into the world. And that's a problem. Okay. And so I'm with you. We'll try to reach him. Uh, and I don't think, you know, to be honest with you, I don't think via this Zoom is, it, it can help, you know, if that's what he wants to do. But at the end of the day, if he's not going to be honest one-on-one -on -one with the scriptures, I, I don't see how he'll be honest on this Zoom study. You know, a lot of times you get people on Zooms like this, they're not trying to prove, you know, they're just trying to prove that they're right. Not trying to prove in what, what God has said. And, and even me, I got to look at myself. Am I just studying and saying what I'm saying to be right? And I'm going to argue even though I don't have a scripture? Or am I really studying and saying what I'm saying because I have scripture to validate it? Because if I'm wrong, I'll humble myself. And say I'm wrong, and uh, I've taught wrong, and uh, Lord forgive me. And this is this is this is now what what I see the scriptures as teaching. Okay. Anybody else have anything else on this? Thank you, brother Dave, for bringing that to our attention. Thank you. I'm glad to know that he's putting that out. Anybody else? Well, I have a question, but it's not pertaining to that. Because, you know, as, as I said, I thought that, you know, we had already been over this twice. So, but I mean, you know, like you said, you know, we do have to love our brethren and do whatever we can. You know, uh, we all do have to be on one accord. But my question is this, because this was asked to me earlier. Um, is, is it scriptural to be able to give online? A brother had called me earlier and asked me that question. He said that uh, he was talking to a brother and a brother told him that whenever he's not able to make it to worship that he gives online. So I would like to know, is that scriptural to be able to um, give on the first day of the week as we're commanded in, 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 in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 1 online? Well, the, well now here, here's what we I'm saying you can give any way you want to give. Let me say that you can give on a Monday online. I mean, if you want to, uh, to the church. Uh, but the idea he has on the saying it's not worship. Make sure we get that. It, it's not, it's he's not. You might need it, Brother Stevenson. Boy, that devil's so busy, he don't want me to hear this. Okay, because my thing is going all over the place. And what I want him, he has to understand this, he has to understand that. He's not worshiping God. You know, he can give, you can give on a Monday or Tuesday if you want to. If they got a system saying you just want to give money to the church, well, that's fine. But you have to understand, it's not part of the five acts of worship that you're supposed to do when you gather together on the first day of the week. He can sit there at the computer and, and take the Lord's Supper and, and a cracker at his home, but it's not, it's not acceptable worship to God. You see what I'm saying? So he's not getting, I'm tell you, he, he, if he's trying to make that, that part of a spiritual sacrifice that's acceptable to God, then no, on a Sunday. He, he, absolutely not. Absolutely not. He, he's not getting any credit. He, he's not worshiping on the first day of the week. 
you're not worshiping on the first day of the week. You know, it's like, and you hear this, and, I, and I've, I've heard saints even teach this. It's like the idea of when I gather together, I want you to get this. I gather together, I just say I get paid once a month. And I get, I, I gather together on the first Sunday of the month, and then I say, I'm going to give enough money for the next Sunday, the next Sunday, and the next Sunday for the whole month. There's no script that authorizes that. There's no that you that you, you need to you need to make sure you give every first day of the week. You can't say, okay, I'm gonna sing I'm gonna sing enough songs this Sunday for the next Sunday and the next Sunday and the next. You can't do that. Yeah, that's, that, that's ridiculous. I'm gonna sing another song to this Sunday, next Sunday, and next Sunday. I ain't opening my mind. You can't do that. And so for him to think that he can give and it be worship, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Thank you for that, Brother Stevenson, because that's what I was telling the brother, you know, that giving is part of the five acts of worship. So how is it that he's um, sending it in online when, you know, Paul told us, you know, in First Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 1, you know, that we're supposed to give on the first day of the week. And if he's sitting at home on a Sunday and he's sending the money in online, that's not part of worship. That's not what worship is. Because like I explained to the brother, you know, we know what Hebrews 10 and 25 tells us. And even what it's what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 when he said, when you gather together in one place. So there's no way that you can be giving online and, and it's part of the worship that we're supposed to do and, and consider that to be okay with God. So that was the answer that I gave him. And I asked the question because, you know, as I always tell you, brother, and I always like to make sure when I tell somebody something that I'm correct in what I said because if I'm wrong, I'm quick to want to go back and correct it. So thank you for that. Is there anyone else that has any questions or comments, whether it's concerning tonight's study or anything else that you may have? All right. If not, then I'm going to ask. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, you all. Don't forget Saturday, 6 p.m. on uh, Brother Stevenson's own page. And I guess it's going to be another interesting topic this Sunday. But 6 p.m. on Brother Stevenson's own page, Central Standard Time, uh, we'll have our open forum. And um, it's been decided that we're going to go over a subject. Um, is Was Jesus created and also was he a son before he came to earth? Uh, Sister Ferguson, go ahead with your question. Hi, brothers. I just need a little bit of a guidance. I'm a new convert. And um, I was baptized in a church of Christ. And... I'm struggling because um, the first time I went into the congregation, um, my very first uh, Bible study with them, they had like this um, Halloween kind of thing in the church. And I, I struggled with it because even before being baptized, I definitely was not I was not a fan of holidays and things like that. So um, I got baptized nevertheless because there was an urgency for my life to be baptized in the, in the body of Christ. <clears throat> so I got baptized and I'm hoping for the best here. And what I'm seeing is that I, I tried another Church of Christ in my area and they have this um holiday thing where they're doing like holiday baskets and things like that and santa claus things for the kids so i'm really struggling brothers to stay true to the biblical principles here and I really want to live by the Bible, but I'm having a hard time finding a church of Christ that is not participating in these um, secular pagan 
beliefs. And I did ask, I'm bold enough and it's important enough for me to ask them. I've, I've spoken to the elders and I've asked them to give me some kind of guidance, biblical guidance, as far as the rationale for doing these things in the Church of Christ. And I'm not getting very good responses and I'm not gonna compromise. So I'm having a hard time finding a Church of Christ that is basically following biblical principles. So do you guys have any advice for me? Um, well, Brother Coffee had his hand up. I'll go ahead and let him go, and then we'll we'll take it in that order. Go ahead, Brother Coffee. Uh, um, thank you, Brother Green. My, my comment is this: I'm go I'm going to make a phone call, um, probably tonight, and find out um, from a season, or let's say from an elder that's been in the church for quite some time, and I'll find out what Church of Christ in that area um, that's worshiping in spirit and in truth. It's just sad that, you know, you being a new convert, myself, I've only been in the Lord's Church um, approaching five years, and thank goodness for Brother Stevenson, he's the one that baptized my wife and I. Um, so I'll find out, I'll do my due diligence to find out, because we can't lose you based upon, because of, of the ignorance of our brothers that are doing inside the church. And so, um, somehow or another, I need to, well, maybe by Saturday I should have some information if you're going to be on on the, um, on the Zoom. If you just come on maybe just for a few minutes and I'll, I'll have something to share with you. And then hopefully uh, okay. we can move forward from there. Thank okay. you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. I, I, I want to say this to you, Sister Ferguson. Um, first of all, you are doing the right thing. Like you said, you're not going to compromise and you're going to stand on biblical principles. So first and foremost, you're doing the right thing because as we read in the book of Revelations, and, and I believe it's in chapter two, where, you know, Jesus tells them that some did not soil their garments. So, you know, you keep continue to stand on biblical principles. Don't waver. And I, we know that you're a babe in Christ, but you do have a, a voice to speak up and say, hey, you know, this isn't right. Now, you know, it's sad to say that, yes, we do have uh, congregations that's falling into these worldly things. You know, that's why we have to be, you know, remain faithful and thankfully that Jesus won't judge us as a congregation, but as an individual. So I will commend you for that. You know, whether or not you're a babe in Christ, I will commend you that you are sticking to biblical principles. And what I would suggest is that you continue to stick to biblical principles. You know, you're not participating in those things and so on and so forth. So you're doing the right thing from the start with that. So I just want to share that. If we have another brother or sister on here that may have something they would like to add, the coffee asks a question what congregation you go to sister ferguson what's the name of the congregation if you don't mind so um i was baptized in um i think it was it's i'm having a brain fart right now um, that's okay let me ask you you go to the same congregation with brother val said no he goes to a different one and um I, I do want to try his, but I was baptized. You know, I'm, I'm struggling here because I'm figuring the, the congregation that baptized me, I, I want to stay true to them, but they're totally celebrating the holidays. Well, so well, let me ask you um, this. I, don't I think know. it's you, West saying... Broward. It's, it's like um, West Broward Church of Christ. And then I, I started Googling other ones and I found 15th Street Church of Christ, which seemed pretty okay. And then now that the season is coming around, like all these holidays, um, I see that they're making like holiday baskets. So I'm like, oh my gosh, here we go again. So I don't wanna, I don't wanna not, congregate 
on on you know I don't want to not go to church but where do where where do I go I have no, no, you have to, you struggling. Have to, you have, well, okay, and thank you, and you're a new convert. Let me just, and Brother Green gave some great advice. I want you to read Revelation chapter 2, and we're going to read this together just real quickly. I want to give you some scriptures, because I think it's the scripture that support us. Understand, as Brother Green said, you're not going to be judged as a congregation. Now, you're there as a babe. You can question them, uh, and, and, and you're doing the right thing by doing that. Uh, but just know God's not holding you accountable, because it's not in your heart. Uh, to to do the works that they're doing that that contradict uh, what the works of the church are. So you know you may be there, yeah, you know, like like Esther for a time like this. I don't know. Uh, it may be why you're here. A person, a new convert, who will speak up and say something. You know, while you're there, plant that seed. So you may be the Esther. You know, for that particular congregation, until you find somewhere else you can congregate, if that's what you so choose to do. But you might have to be there to fight and to help them. Uh, you don't want to not worship God. Again, you need to gather with those saints and know that God is looking at you. In Revelation 2 and verse 12, look at the message to, to the church in Pergamos. And this is what you have to understand. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos, right, these things said he, which have the sharp sword with two edges. I know your works, where you dwell, even where Satan's seed is. You hold fast my name and have not denied my faith. Even in those days where in Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwelling. Now notice this. Even though Jesus talks about some good things and you got a man there who was faithful who died for the faith. In verse 14, Jesus said, but I have a few things against you. Because you have there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things, sacrifice unto idols, and to commit fornication. So this is a congregation where you have people who are stumbling blocks to other members, where you have people here who are teaching different doctrines and different beliefs. Okay? And so in verse 15, so have you also them that hold the doctrine of Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. So here's a church with different doctrines, different teachings amongst the church of Christ. And so when he tells them, repent, or else I'll come unto you quickly and fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He's not fighting against you because it's not in your heart. You know what they're doing is wrong. And so he says in verse 17, he that hath an ear, this is an individual, he that hath an ear, uh, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna. And will give him a white stone and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, save he that receiveth it. And so I just want to leave you with this, sister. You're not going to find, and I want to make sure you get this, you're not going to find a, a, a perfect congregation until a perfect group of people that's doing everything right. It's sad to say, but everywhere you go, there's going to be issues and problems among, among members of the body of Christ. Because the weak and the tear are always growing together. I want you to understand that. Now, again, if you're looking for developing growth and they're hindering you so much to where you can't grow, then I would suggest that you find a congregation, you know, at least they don't have this problem that really vex your soul where they're celebrating and honoring pagan holidays and making it a work of the church, okay? Mm -hmm. And so just want to encourage you. You just hang in there. You do the right thing. Keep gathering around them. You keep going through the five acts of worship every Sunday, and you keep raising your hand in them Bible classes whenever opportunity permits itself. Okay, I'm going to um, drop the names of the churches, 15th Street. All right, thank you so much for the advice. Yes, my sister, because, you know, like Brother Stevenson was saying, you know, we have to stand firm on truth. And, you know, the Bible also tells us that we must work out our uh, salvation with fear and trembling. And that's an individual thing. You have to work out your salvation. So, um, again, don't let them discourage you. You know, you're in, you're, you, you, when you were added to the Lord's church, you were added to the right church. So don't let them discourage you. But you continue to do as Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and 15, to study to show yourself approved unto God. 
So you can continue to keep doing what, what, what you learn from the scriptures that's right. And please don't allow them to discourage you because I'm pretty sure all of us on here that's been members of the church for a while can share stories about some stuff we didn't went through in congregations we belong to. But we have to continue to stand firm and flat-footed on God's word and stand on truth. So, again, just want to encourage you and to share that with you. Do we have anyone else that has any questions or comments, whether it's concerning tonight's study or anything else you may have? All right, well, once again, everyone, please don't forget Saturday, uh, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time on Brother Stevenson's Zoom page. We'll be having our open forum. And I also want to ask uh, the brethren, you all know who I'm, I'm talking about, I, do you still I want to get together Saturday morning at 11? think so brother green okay then so um you all know so and uh we'll take it from there before we close out is there anyone that has any prayer requests uh brother green uh, yes sir um let us just keep our sister in prayer most definitely most definitely most definitely. I also uh, want to make a quick announcement. I got a phone call today and um, something that, you know, I've been uh, trying to, to work out and, been, and prayed about it even. And it looks like this Monday we may have a, uh, our brother joining us, Brother Ozan. He called me um, this earlier today. And he said that he was able to shift some things around. So on Monday, he'll be on our 7 o'clock. If it be the Lord's will, he'll be on our 7 o'clock uh, study. So looking forward to having that brother join us. Um, and like I said, I've been trying to get him to come on for a while now. And finally, uh, he said he'll be able to make it. So I'm looking forward to that. I see your hand, Brother Javier. Go ahead, my brother. A prayer for uh, tomorrow. There's a meeting I, I need to get uh, get involved with. So just give me a prayer for that meeting. Most definitely, my brother. Most definitely. Is there anyone else that has any prayer requests before we close it out? All right. If not, um, Brother Stevenson, my brother, if you don't mind, could you please close us out with a word of prayer? Your mic is not muted, my brother. It's not unmuted. You can't? Okay, well, uh, Brother Lewis, if you're able to, can you please close us out with a word of prayer? Yes, let us go in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this night of study. We're so thankful for everyone that was able to call in on the Zoom call and to search the scriptures and reading of uh, Zephaniah. And Father, we're just so thankful for your, your your commandments and your word, Father, to guide us. We ask, Father, that you will bless us in our Christian walk, that you will fill us with the knowledge of your, your truth, that you will fill us with all wisdom and all spiritual understanding, Father. We pray, Father, that our walk may be worthy and pleasing to you. We pray, Father, that we're uh, being fruitful in every good work. Father God, we lift up prayers for Brother Green. And his family uh, during this time of bereavement, we ask that you would be with him and that things work out well, that, uh, that he's able to find some uh, way to be able to have, a, uh, whether it's YouTube or Zoom or the, the call to, to see the uh, the funeral procession for his sister. We just pray, Father, that you will work that out. Father, we also lift up prayers for Brother Coffee and his sister. Uh, we pray, Father, that you will continue to be with him and his wife and be with their family as well, be with the things and his endeavors and his Christian walk. Give him the strength uh, that he's needed to see, uh, lead, his, uh, lead his family and also his, his, uh, uh, as his uh, Christian walk in the church as well, Father. We uh, also lift up prayers for uh, Brother uh, Javier and the meeting that he will be uh, having on tomorrow. Uh, if it be your will, we pray, Father, that you will bless him with uh, that things work out well, that things are set in place, that, Father, that you may be uh, lifted up, Father, uh, that the, uh, whatever the topic may be, Father, that you will bless Javier, Brother Javier with a ready recollection of the things that is, that is needed to be able to spread the gospel. Uh, Father, we just pray that you will be with Sister First as well and her uh, 
the things that she's saying at the church where she's at, Father, we just pray that you will uh, be with her and her guidance, uh, that you will bless her with the things that she's in need of, Father, and to be able to even reach those who are, uh, who, uh, Father, who are doing things that are not, uh, doing things that are contrary to the scriptures and not according to your word, Father. We pray that she will be a guiding light. Father, we just pray that uh, she will grow where she is, Father, and continue on to doing, uh, worshiping, Father, the way that is, uh, that, that you ask us to do. Father, we ask you to be with us as we uh, sign out tonight. Uh, bless us with a good night's nice rest, Father, to be that will that we'll rise and see another day that you will bless us with. We ask this prayer, Father, we thank you for your son uh, and all the all the, uh, the precious uh, blessings and the promises that, that we have through your son, Christ Jesus. We ask this prayer in your son's Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you for that prayer, my brother. And in closing, as always, may God continue to bless and keep each and every one of you. Love you all dearly with the love of Christ until we meet again. Good night, everyone. And we're going to continue to pray for you, Sister Ferguson. We most definitely will. Good night. Good night, Thank sisters. you. Good night. Good night everyone.